How are you doing? Don't you want to stand up front somewhere so you can be seen? Are you sure? All right. All right. So I am standing back here next to you. Correct? That's awesome. I love it. I love it. Go on down, Sabiki. Move on down. Move on down, Sabiki. You're getting it back. We could let it play. Anybody got any good jokes or stories? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They thought you were going to sing us something. I was disappointed you didn't sing today. You just read the poem. All right, there we go. Oh, I, I, please, right there next to Dan. Come on down, seriously. No, no, Senator, Senator. Oh, no, he can't. Governor! Thank everyone for being here. More than 230 years ago, the Founding Fathers gave us our Constitution, the basis for the formation of this country. And the liberties guaranteed to us by the Constitution are sacred. And we have a responsibility to uphold the framework that those Founding Fathers established. They firmly believed that to protect the inalienable rights that they set out, they needed to ensure that citizens had the right to bear arms, which was cemented in the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is clear and concise and secures the unfringed right of law-abiding citizens to keep and bear arms. I'm proud to be joined by members of the General Assembly who've helped to lead the way on this important issue. My office has worked closely with Lieutenant Governor McNally, Speaker Sexton, Leader Johnson, and Leader Lamberth, and we appreciate their hard work. While we are introducing this as an administration bill, there are some on this stage who have championed this issue for many years. To them and to every legislator who's standing with me today and defending the rights of Tennesseans, thank you. Today, I'm announcing that we will be joining 16 other states in this nation by introducing a constitutional carry law in the state of Tennessee. This law would extend the constitutional right to carry a handgun to all law-abiding citizens with or without a permit who are 21 and older except in restricted areas. 
Now, with the freedom and liberties guaranteed to us in the Second Amendment, also comes a great responsibility to steward them wisely and to protect our citizens. Here in Tennessee, there was an 85% increase in guns stolen from gar cars and trucks over a two-year period in 16 and 17. In light of this reality, we need to be increasingly vigilant in also enacting laws that strengthen our ability to protect our citizens. That's why the legislation I am proposing will significantly increase penalties on those who steal or unlawfully possess a firearm, including a mandatory minimum sentence for those who steal a firearm. The bill is not only focused on protecting our Second Amendment liberties, but also on increasing safety for all Tennesseans. This legislation is about increasing freedom for law-abiding citizens and implementing harsher penalties for criminals. We'd like for you all to have the opportunity to hear from others, uh, Speaker Sexton, Chairman Bell, Leader Lambert, Senator Stevens, and then uh, I'll answer questions. Speaker Sexton. Thank you, Gov there we go. Thank you, Governor, and uh, we appreciate you being a very strong voice and strong supporter of the Second Amendment, and we greatly appreciate your leadership on this issue and working uh, to allow us to come to this agreement to where we're moving forward, which is a great day for law-abiding Tennesseans in the state of Tennessee who want to protect their constitutional right to carry the gun inside the state of Tennessee. So thank you for that today, Governor. It is also a great day as well for our partners in law enforcement, the DAs, the judges, the sheriffs, the police chiefs, those who serve and protect our communities. Communities all across our great state of Tennessee will find this to be an effective tool in combating gangs and violent crime because we'll be taking guns out of the hands of criminals and taking criminals off the streets in Tennessee. Thank you, Governor, for what you've done for us. Well, Governor, I'm going to start out by thanking you as well. When I look across this stage and see people who have served many years in the legislature, I see people who have carried a similar bill. I see people who have voted for a similar bill. But we would not be here today if it wasn't for your leadership, Governor. So we appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah. It's time that we start trusting Tennesseans with the, with the rights that were guaranteed them by our founders. I'm excited to be here today, excited to be helping in this endeavor, and looking forward for us to start trusting Tennesseans. Governor, I will echo what others have said. Thank you very much for your leadership on this issue. Any time that we can stand for freedom together is a good day in Tennessee. Today, this is the first of its kind constitutional carry bill that, to my knowledge, has ever been filed anywhere in the nation. This bill reduces penalties on otherwise law-abiding citizens, individuals that have done nothing wrong other than exercise their Second Amendment right, individuals that would be eligible to get a carry permit, but for whatever reason did not do so before they came across the attention of law enforcement. These are individuals that are mothers and fathers. These are individuals that are business owners. These are individuals that are employees throughout the state of Tennessee that choose to carry their firearm for their own protection. And to criminalize that behavior is ridiculous. I'm glad that today, that day, that is going to end. On the other hand, for those criminals out there, those felons, those that choose to misuse their firearms and attack their fellow citizens, hear this now. If you steal a gun in this state, if you use that gun, if you possess that gun and you're a convicted felon, you will go to prison, and you will go to prison for a very, very long time under this bill. <laughs> to our law-abiding, freedom-loving, 
Tennesseans who choose to carry a firearm to protect themselves, their family, and their fellow citizens. I thank some of our Democratic colleagues for joining us here in the audience today. This hopefully will be a bipartisan effort. Freedom doesn't know any particular party. And to reduce a penalty on law-abiding citizens, especially to take a misdemeanor off the books, and to increase penalties that we've all been seeking for for years is something that, again, I hope we will all join together for the benefit of all Tennesseans. Thank you all for being here today. I appreciate you all supporting us. I just want to, again, thank Governor Lee for getting behind this effort to uh, expand lawful Tennesseans' rights to protect themselves. Uh, government and the people who instituted our government believed that law-abiding citizens have this protection, this ability to protect themselves, and it, I'm thankful now we are going to do it. But also, as the governor mentioned, I want to emphasize, with rights come responsibilities, and those who forfeit those and misuse their rights, the state of Tennessee will, as Leader Lambert said, come down very harshly on you. Uh, we do not accept that felons, people who should not be having in possession and exercising these rights, they forfeit them, and they're going to serve a long time in prison when they do so. And so thank you again, Governor Lee, for your leadership. Thank you. Thank you all for, for being here. Thank you all for being here as well. Uh, we'd like to take the opportunity to answer questions, so uh, we'll open it up. Natalie? Yeah, so I am listening to law enforcement, and that's the reason with the uh, rights given to law-abiding citizens, we combine uh, increased penalties for those who break the law. That combination takes into account concerns of law enforcement, but protects the freedoms of law-abiding citizens. You know, criminal justice reform, uh, as I have said all along and continue to say, is about being tough on crime and smart on crime. And there's nothing about this that is in conflict with that approach, and, um, and we can have both. That's what's required for real criminal justice reform, and that's what you'll see as we move forward on that issue as well. Sam? This is the way to provide rights <coughs> for law-abiding citizens and to provide penalties for criminals. That's, that's what this bill is intended to do, and that's what it will do. Chris. I have a different type of question. All right. Uh, about the coronavirus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Feel free to ask it. You know, it's the, the most important thing we can do is be prepared. Um, I was in Washington, D.C. and met with CDC officials myself weeks ago. Uh, the, the commissioner of our Department of Health has also met with those officials, but more importantly, Dr. Piercy is uh, developing a coordinated response with TEMA and our emer emergency preparedness teams, uh, local, statewide, federal, uh, we actually will we'll have an, a, a meeting tomorrow afternoon at 2.30, bringing those teams all together. Uh, we have a plan and a strategy to be prepared. Uh, it's important that we track this, and that's why we have daily uh, interaction with, with health officials and with federal officials. Um, we're very concerned about it, and we will also, by the way, be issuing public statements when and if the first case arrives in Tennessee, 
but it's a it's, it's a good question. We we are working daily to make certain that we are prepared. On the bill, Governor, <coughs> what is the estimated uh, fiscal impact of the bill? We haven't we haven't um, fully vetted that, and the the language on the bill, the draft has been presented. Uh, has been completed and given to the legislature those details about the drafts and subsequently the cost uh, once it goes through the review process will will, will be available. Do you have some certainty of having some estimate, some general idea of what uh, uh, certainly depending on what gets approved, what part of this bill gets approved, what the what the penal, what penalties are approved and the subsequent cost to them. It's very hard to project what that might be, but there will be a cost associated with this. We just don't know uh, exactly what that's going to be yet. So, Kyle? Governor, do you believe that this bill will have an impact on juvenile transfers? Uh, will it have an impact what? On juveniles? Well, Go it will stiffen the penalties for those who um, provide a handgun to a juvenile. Uh, so we, we need to keep hands, uh, keep guns away from juveniles, and the part of the stiffened penalty package here will be to um, to work to keep guns out of the hands of youth. No increases for juveniles, though? Uh, the, no increase in penalties? The, the penalties, uh, well, it depends on what their penalty is. So there's a number of increases, and there would be a number of enhancements, and, and the details of that will all, all be coming out in a few minutes. Andy? Well, I was gonna ask uh, and not in a few minutes, within, within a day or two. Andy? Won't be immediately available today. Yeah, I mean, if someone gets into the, uh, someone who has is going, carrying a gun without a permit now, if they commit a crime, if they commit a misdemeanor, what happens? Do they, do they, do they lose their privilege to carry that? Or, uh, well, the, let me just say this. The same rules that apply for permit carrying citizens today will apply for permitless carrying citizens as a result of this bill. So none of the, uh, the, the same things that provide for uh, a permit, meeting all the requirements that provide for a permit, those same requirements will, pre will be provided uh, for those who no longer have to carry a permit. One last question, Nancy. Yeah, Nancy. First of all, I'd say you don't, you don't crack down on crime by penalizing law-abiding citizens. You crack down on crime by penalizing criminals. And this bill strengthens penalties for those criminals who misuse or illegally possess a firearm. This is about creating a safer environment for Tennesseans, for Tennessee families, for Tennesseans across the state. Uh, by strengthening the penalties for those who are lawbreakers. So, thank you all for, thank, thank you all. all. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Well